my name is Zach or Tank or Tankinator. Uh, I was a professional sports better from uh, the beginning of 2021 when it became legal here in Colorado uh, until uh, for just about two years. So the big question, I guess, is how did I do it? And so that's what I'm going to run through uh, is how I did it. I'm going to talk about a couple other things, um, which I guess I get to, and then I'm going to take a bunch of questions. That's my plan. Uh, so I'll just jump into it. First off, uh, I want to say uh, don't try to sports bet to make money yourself. Uh, the, a lot of the stuff that I did um, just doesn't work today, or it just works much less well. Uh, a lot of the things that made a bunch of money make much less today, and you can put the time and effort into it, um, and you might be able to make just a little bit, but it's certainly not going to do anything like it did uh, for me when I was doing it, because there just aren't those same opportunities anymore. Um, and there's also a lot of risk involved, right? So the potential benefit is much smaller and the potential risk is still enormous. So this is just a big disclaimer. Don't, uh, don't try to, you know, take what I'm doing and jump into it and be like, aha, I'm an expert now. All right. So, um, I'm throwing it out there. All right. All right. So how did I actually do it? Let's get into it. There's big two things. One is promos, and the other one is arbitrage opportunities. Uh, so I'll just start with that. Uh, promos, all right? What are we talking about with promos? Well, if you look on the right-hand side here, there's all kinds of promos, and you've seen them. They're all the ads that you see. But back in 2021, things were really crazy, right? First off, we got sign-up promos. We got daily promos. Sign-up promos are the things like I just saw here, right? And these are huge. These are actually huge. And you see stuff like these $5,000 uh, bets, and they're not giving you $5,000, but they are oftentimes giving you, you know, I mean, $2,500 of expected value. And when I'm saying expected value, I'm talking about, I mean, the phrase itself is just as simple as how likely is something to happen times how much do you get if that thing happens, right? So a $5,000, a bonus bet, or all of the promos are different. But oftentimes what it means is if you sign up and you don't or you deposit five thousand dollars of your own money onto the website, then they will give you a five thousand dollar like free bet. Right. And a free bet is not a normal bet. That's one that only gets you money if you win, right? So normally if you bet ten dollars for a coin flip and you win, you get twenty dollars. A free bet, if it's a ten dollar free bet and you win, you only get those ten dollars, not twenty dollars. So when it says $5,000 after you go through all of those loops and stuff, uh, it's not that much. But if it's still not that much and we're talking $2,000, that's still a lot of money, right? And when you have 20 different sports books that you're signing up for, like I was, uh, there's a lot of money to be made in those signups, right? It was a little bit stressful back then too, just because there's a lot of time limits on these things. Uh, you have to have quite a bit of money to be putting into all of the dif these different books. Uh, and it's all new here, right? So I don't know how all of it's working. All of the different regulations are different for each of these books. There's a lot of you know, research that you have to do to figure out how exactly all of it works. Make sure that you're not putting it into a book that then says, oh, you only get the money if you uh, put it onto this way instead of the other way. Uh, whatever it might be, right? Uh, also, it's only for like your first bet. If you put $5,000 on and then you accidentally place a $5 bet on a small thing, then you're out of luck, right? And they're very, they love to, to screw you over on all these kinds of things, right? Now, you can always take your money back out. Uh, so that wasn't the problem, but the potential is what you're missing out on uh, or what I was missing out on. Um, all right, so cool. Those are the sign up bonuses. Those are pretty straightforward. The other bonuses are what I had here of like daily promos. And that's what I was doing on a daily basis. Well, that's part of it. And this is what I started up with or started with as far as promos go is looking at this stuff like we have on the right here, right? Uh, you have something like any of these stuff, right? Bucks to win the game and all these four things to happen. Uh, and I would be trying to figure out if this is a good boost or not because all of the different sports books, I mean, there's 20 of them. I was on like 15, and then there's more than 20. But I was on 15. All of them have different things like this. And some of them are good, and some of them, a lot more, are not good. And so I have to figure out if they are or not. And the way that you have to do that is by 
looking at other books and trying to figure out what the actual market value is for these types of things. So you can go and you can look at other books and you can see what is the chance that the Bucks win the game, right? Well, if I go on to, if I, if I look back here, right, there's some websites that did it for me. And I didn't start by doing this. I started by going to like five different sports books and looking up what the chance is for, I mean, here, the Bucks to win the game, right? And I would just look at if it's plus 110 on one site and plus 120 on another, or just even money on another one, plus 100, um, whatever it might be, I would look at all those. And then I would do the same thing for each of these other three things. And I would uh, put them all together and figure out what the combined odds were. And then I would compare it to this. And it took a ton of time. Uh, and it wasn't as effective as once I found some websites uh, that did it for me and were um, just time savers, uh, really. And you could just see a lot more sports books. You could see well, just all this kinds of information, right? Now that said, it's still a lot of information, or a lot of work, and it's not very fun. And when people are thinking, oh, it's professional sports betting. I like sports betting. If I could do that as a job, it would be great. This isn't what they're thinking of, right? Maybe they're thinking of doing research as to how good somebody is at throwing three-pointers, right? Or you go on uh, news sites and you hear rumors that somebody was really grinding because they missed one last week. And when, or a free throw and you really never want to do that again. And you're like, well, if they're really grinding, I heard this rumor, I'm going to make a bet that they're going to go over however many points instead of under or something like that. Um, I think all of that is hogwash. Uh, anybody who says that that's how they're making money is either lucky, which is most likely the case, or just lying to you. Um, the big way that I think that you can make money with sports betting is one of two ways i guess one of three ways because i arbitrage um number one is promos we've talked about that but if you are really really good at stats and you can look at all kinds of long form statistics and do all kinds of different modeling and come up with your own predictions as to how many points a player is going to get in a game or how many rebounds or other kinds of things like that perhaps you can i wouldn't bet on it and I wouldn't bet on it because each of these sports books has a professional team that either is in-house or oftentimes the higher to do it for them. Uh, that is almost certainly better than you at coming up with those same models because they hired the people that were good at it, right? So I don't think you're going to be better than them at coming up with those statistics. That said, the other way to do it is by looking at different sports books and comparing them to each other. And that's where it really comes down to. And so for promos, right, we're talking about that. Oh, uh, you can go and you can find promos that are good, right? Usually, as far as the the VIG goes, the VIG is just how much juice is on the line. Uh, if you look here, like minus 110, minus 120, an even bet is plus 100. So that means if I bet $100, then I will get 200 back if that happens. Minus 110 means if I bet $110 and that wins, I'll get 100. So if it's like this, where it's minus on both sides, then that means that either side, if it, you know, if you bet 100 on either side, you're going to lose no matter what, right? Which kind of makes sense for a book, right? That's that's the profit that the book takes. Um, but that is a lot. We have a large uh, rake or juice or vig, whatever you want to call it. And it's hard to beat. The only way you can beat it is by either finding these promos where they are, you know, intentionally giving out money to get people to sign up uh, or to keep visiting their sports book and then hoping people place other bad bets while they're there. Um, or the other one is going to arbitrage where a book messes up, right? And sometimes that happens. There are a lot of sports books uh, and all of them are putting out thousands and thousands of lines every single day. And it happens not irregularly that they mess up. How do you know that they mess up, or how do I? How did I know? And that's a tough thing to do. How do you, is is knowing for sure, and you never really do. But what I bet on is that the, the sports books who got it wrong. Uh, actually, I think I have uh, over here. Yeah, I could see here, right? Um, a sports book who got it wrong is more likely than ten sports books all getting it wrong. So here is uh, an example of what I would be looking for, right? As far as arbitrage goes, which is like uh, Val Kunis to get a double-double, 
right? Now, over here on points bets, they have that as plus 110 um, for no, right? You think it's more likely that he does, or, or sorry, that's over here. Yes, they think it's more likely uh, that he does not than he does. That's for most players, right? Over on Bet Rivers, they think that it's, uh, they also agree that it's more likely, but not to the same extent. Over here, it's plus 150 and it's minus 132, meaning that there is a little bit, uh, well, they calculated for you 3% profit that you could get if you were to bet on both sides. You could do that and you could bet on both sides. The problem with that is a few things. One, it takes time to do the bets, right? And these kinds of things that show up, they're usually there for no more than a few minutes at most. They usually go away real quick uh, because either the book just sees it or the book sees a whole bunch of people betting on one side of that market. So they you know, change their line. Uh, and so if you go to bet on one side and then it's gone by the time you get to the other side, now you've potentially just made a bad bet, right? Uh, so what you want to do and the way to make more money with it is instead of betting on both sides, you just look at which one of these books messed up. Is it, is it points bet or is it bet rivers? Uh, and most likely 10 books are saying plus 150 over here and their others are saying, you know, minus 175, right? And only one of them is minus 130. And you're like, well, minus 130, that's the one that messed up. Or maybe all of them are minus 130 and the rest are, you know, plus 120 and one of them is plus 150 and you're like whoa huh, huh. the plus 150 that's the one i want to go with so you have to spend all that time researching that which means that you even less time to place the bets so all of this means that you're spending a whole bunch of time looking and finding these lines most of the time you're not even able to place the bets and that's you know wasted time um when you are able to place the bets the actual money that you're making is pretty small um so you have to bet a lot right and when I was doing this full time, I mean, I was probably placing 30 bets each day. Each one's like 200 bucks or something like that, right? As well as doing promos and stuff like that. So, you know, it was a lot of money that I was going through and it makes some money. It's not great money, you know, it's not like uh, I'm going on vacations all the time with it, but, you know, it's okay. The good things about it, uh, just to get into tangents and stuff, I'm kind of thinking off the top of my head. I don't have a a great timeline of a presentation here in front of me, but things that were great about this job is, for one, I could do it from my phone, right? I could be looking at my phone, see a good opportunity, and place it right there, even if I'm at a concert. You know, I don't have to clock in at a certain time. I don't have to clock. Well, I guess people like clocking out at a certain time, which I didn't get to do. But also, if I wanted to take a day off of work because I wanted to. I don't know, go on a trip or something, I could. And all I would lose is that single day's worth of profit or half day if I take half a day off, whatever it might be. Um, so I, I don't know, it's all the things people talk about of be your own boss, whatever, I guess, except, I don't know, that was nice. Uh, the rest of the actual work was boring, right? I mean, I'm talking about it and you're staring at these numbers, you're clicking through these things, you're trying to, to go through it as quickly as possible and look at as many numbers as possible. It's not very fun. It's not super exciting. And to be honest, when I got into it, I wasn't a sports guy. I didn't care too much about sports. I didn't care too much about watching them. I started, you know, because of this and wanted to do that. And I like sports now. Uh, but I got into it because uh, I had some friends who were into, you know, sports and they started sports betting. And one friend was like, oh, I've got this you know, foolproof way to beat the books. I'm like, Whatever, I'll throw $10 at it. I immediately realized I was stupid and wasn't going to work. Um, but there was the promos, and I got in through the promos of signing up because I saw the value there. Uh, and then from there, I saw the the daily promos, things like this. And then I had to go and spend a bunch of time doing that. And then from there, I found this kind of thing where I was able to make that much faster. And from there, from being able to see all of these books at the same time, I could see times where one book you know, was very different from others. Uh, and from and get arbitrage opportunities from that. So that was kind of my timeline of events. If I knew everything going into it, as I do now, I could have made much more money. Um, I think, I, I mean, I probably could have made $200,000 in two years uh, if I started out placing those $200 bets. Because when I started, I was placing $20 bets uh, until I really knew what I was doing and and so I missed out uh, on some of the stuff. Uh, but 
that's okay. Um, you know, uh, let me think. Let me get back into it. Um, that is how it kind of worked as far as sports betting goes. Is I I looked at all these numbers. I figured out where books disagreed with each other. I placed bets on those. Uh, and or I looked at promos and found if this promo disagreed with all of what the other books said. Basically, if this is a, an outlier or if it's still within their rake and they're still making money off of it. Um, or things like this, right? A 50% profit boost that I get to pick which uh, line I want to put it on. 50% is a lot. For 50%, you could pretty much place it on anything and make money. Um, because nowhere in here is there going to be a 50% rake, right? Um, so cool. But that said, you want to maximize your profit. You don't just want to, you know, place it instantly. So you want to find the line where they are, you know, most wrong and bet on that. Uh, but it takes a bunch of time. As far as the games, I probably watched one out of 50, you know, games as far as things I bet on. Um, you know, I just didn't care that much i placed way too many bets to watch all of them and also watching an entire i don't grizzlies game to look at if jackson jr gets over or under two and a half assists isn't very exciting you know i want to watch the game to see who wins or for the fun of it not to stare at one player's assist count uh so that part wasn't fun and i think that's what people are thinking when they're thinking professional sports betting uh and what's exciting about it um and it's none of those things people are thinking. Um, anyway, so other things that I wanted to talk about, uh, bankroll management. People are often you know, ready to jump in, but you have to manage your bankroll. This is a risky thing that I was doing, right? Um, you can and you do lose lots of bets, right? When we're looking at this 3%, it is a guaranteed 3%. Well, let me pause for a second and just say 3% is insane. It's almost never this high. It's almost always, you know, one and a half percent, maybe two percent. Three percent is a very is an outlier as far as like good sports bets go and opportunities go. Um, oftentimes, you're able to get to three percent if you only bet on one side that's misplaced instead of hedging your bet by base, by betting on the other side that's like a normal bet that has normal juice. Uh, the more bets you place, just in general, the more juice you're going to give the sports book. Um, so you don't really want to hedge. You really just want to uh, to place the one on the on the wrong sports book. Um, anyway, going back to that uh, bankroll management, right? If you only have I don't know a thousand bucks, you can still, I mean, hypothetically, sports bet. You know, by placing dollar sized bets or something like that, fifty cent bets, and have it still be you know quote unquote profitable. It's not worth your time, obviously. And I think that nowadays it's not really worth your time anyway. All of those things I was talking about doing, you can still do, do those things. But instead of it being $5,000 or $1,000, it's $100 or $200, right? For these you know, bets, back when I was doing it, it's instead of a 50% profit boost on a $100 bet or a $50 bet, it's on a $10 bet, right? Uh, it just the amounts are much lower. So the same amount of time that you have to spend to find those what things are profitable, what things aren't, you're just not making nearly as much money on. So that's why I'm saying it's not so good. It can still make money, right? It's just not worth the time. Um, and the risk is still there, right? Why did I stop? I'll talk about that for a second, which is that I got limited. Uh, if you are only betting on you know, weird things like player assists or, you know, golf games if a player is to be in the top 10 or other crazy, you know, weird things, which is what I would do when I'm on, you know, some websites and I click on what, what are the arbitrage opportunities and it pops up. I don't really care what the sport is. It's a player I've never heard of oftentimes doing a sport, usually that I have heard of because there's not that many sports. Uh yeah, it's just something that I don't care about, right? And V figure that out pretty quick, and I go from being able to bet two hundred dollars. I say pretty quick. It took, you know, a couple years, I guess. But like I said at the beginning, I was only betting twenty dollars at the beginning. So, uh, V figure it out, and 
over time, you're just going to get limited. And nowadays, if I go on to, you know, bet MGM and I try to place a bet on a player to get over under a certain number of assists, I will be able to bet like three dollars, and I they'll they won't let me bet more than that. Uh, so I basically kicked off of those books, and as time goes by, I got kicked off of more and more books where I just it became less and less opportunities to find stuff and you still have to spend the same amount of time. So it was just less and less profitable. And nowadays I basically do, you know, next to no sports bets. Um, all right. That's the getting limited part. You can prevent yourself from getting limited to a degree at the end of the day. If you are beating a sports book and you are making profit off of them, they will figure it out and they will limit you. But if you are betting on, only weird things like, you know, these uh, prop bets, they'll figure it out a lot quicker. If you're betting on mainline bets, it takes a lot more time. But that said, if you're betting on mainline bets, those are more solved markets. Those are much more easy to predict. Uh, and a lot more people bet on them, which is a large part of how they do their predictions. Um, so if you're betting on those, you're losing money. So if you're trying to not get limited, that's a problem because the other side of it is trying to make money and those are competing interests. So when I was doing it, I was like, eventually I will get limited, but I'm not going to try to limit how much money I'm making in order to not get limited because those are both limits. Um, and I, I, I don't really regret that. Um, hedging versus risk. This is another part of it, which is like I was talking about here. Um, you do get more risk if you only bet on one side, you know, the, improperly placed line but you have more risk if your bet loses you just are out that money right if you're placing 30 bets every single day you have you know overall a lot of potential risk but you know law of averages does happen when you have a lot more bets so in some ways it's less risky um just because if if you have 100 different bets um you can expect at the end of the day things to go in a certain direction and usually they do maybe not day but month uh, and that is how it kind of went um i'm going to talk a little bit about the the sports betting community if you can call it that um there's so many scams and you see all kinds of different scams going on in sports betting places like twitter or reddit or so many discords and telegram channels and anything like that long story short just never pay for any picks right if someone wants you to pay to join their discord because they have all of these smart picks in their discord don't do it if somebody wants you to pay to give them money and then they'll make a bet for you because they know a good pick well don't do it anytime that you're paying money to a person be incredibly careful the only time that i paid money to a, a, a quote-unquote person was when I was using this website, um, which was like $15 a month and saved the time by giving me these lines. Um, I haven't paid for that in a long time because this website is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. It was called Odds Boom, and but if you go there now, it was bought by another company that charges $150 a month. And in my opinion, at least, is the UI is much less friendly and uh, doesn't show nearly as much stuff and so on. So. Uh, that's another part of the reason I got out is because this went away and as well as some other stuff um, in the environment that got worse like that. Um, never pay for picks. If you are just ever thinking about paying money for something, think about is it for you know somebody knowing more information than you? Uh, and if it is, then don't do it. And that'll, that'll solve all of them. Um, all right, I have been talking for about 25 minutes, so let me go and uh, talk a little bit about what I do think is good. These three people, as well as some other people, they don't give you picks. What they do is they do all this work that I was talking about up here for you, and that's what I like. I don't know these people. I have no affiliation, but that's what I do nowadays as far as sports betting is I just look at what their Twitters are, and when they say, hey, this is a good bet to place, I do it. Um, they look at these, and they do the math, and they say, hey, this is a good bet. That's all there is to it. It saves time. Um, I like this person because their website gives all kinds of tools that you can use um, for your own sports betting, like devigging to see what the true odds are or to do combinations of um, 
like these things, multiple different bets to see what the combined odds are, or taking multiple combined ones to split them up to see what individual ones are. Um, none of it is, uh, how do I phrase it? It's hard to know the exact right thing uh, or right odds because you don't know which sports book is right, you know? So you kind of have to average and guess or just go with the most, like, not in your favor book to like be most sure that it's a good bet for you. Um, but if you go with the book that is least in your favor, then you're almost never going to find good bets. So you kind of have to I don't know, use your judgment to figure out where in between um, you want to land. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah. Let me take some questions and see what other people are saying. Uh, uh, I see some. Uh, I yeah, go ahead. Um, are the uh, sports books taking a cut of every bet? Like, are they, are they, or is it like, how do they make their money beyond just like getting the odds right every time? Yeah. So they are making their money basically by taking a cut every time a bet is made. If I go back over here, right, um, minus one twenty. So if one person bets on, you know, over, and another person bets on under, and they both bet one hundred and twenty dollars, well, they have now taken two hundred and forty dollars. And if you say the over wins, they now have to pay out $220, meaning that they have an extra $20 in their pocket that they have profited. Uh, and that's just the case for all of them. Um, anytime that, if it's plus 100 on both sides, then that means they're making zero money. And that's never the case. Uh, so that's that's where the sports books are making their money. Um, yeah. It's it's tough to place bets because they always are are having a uh, a rake, and you have to not just have a profitable bet, but it has to be profitable larger than the rake that they're taking. So, Oseki asks, "What are your thoughts on esports betting? Is that different than regular sports betting?" So, esports betting is basically the same. Uh, I have looked at it, and I mean, it's it's cool just because I like esports. That said, um the the juice or the rake on esports betting is almost always absolutely enormous right instead of it being minus 110 or minus 120 it will be minus 150 on both sides meaning that it's like it's like coin flipping except if you win you get a dollar and you have to pay five dollars to do the coin flip right you have to really 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 know uh how that coin is going to land in order for that to be worth it and I think that's it's just not possible. Uh, it's just too big of of a uh, of a rake on that. I, I think they can do that too, just because they're the only ones doing esports betting, and the people wanting to do it, I think for the most part, don't care what the rake is. They didn't even think about that or look at it. So those are the people that they're trying to get, and it works, you know. Inventor asks, um, in a, in paraphrased, uh, if you are not going to get addicted to gambling. And you um, uh, are never reading the promotions before. Is it free money to try and you know take some of these promotions and redeem some of them to you know get get that free bet? Uh, yeah. I mean, it it is. Uh, you have to be careful. Just as far as like, you can still lose money, right? We are talking on average. It is plus expected value. Um, but you know that's on average. You can still lose money, so don't bet outside your means. Um, but if you are only doing, you know, the, the sign up promotions and you're doing research to make sure you know exactly what the sign up promotions are uh, and the terms and that kind of thing, sometimes you have to place it, you know, within three days of signing up and whatever it might be. Uh, it is hypothetically, you know, free money. Uh, and I have, I mean, in my last living situation, I had some roommates and I was like, Hey, if you, uh, I will depos deposit my own money onto an account that you make and do it just like uh, I'll, I'll pay you a small amount to be able to use your free sign up promo, um, which, you know, w which worked. Um, so, yeah. Here's a, a good work video um, from a few days ago. They talked about some of the kind of tricks they play and the, with the, the terms and conditions of those 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 ads. Uh, which you can watch mm -hmm. after this lecture, uh, but I put it there just because it was very good. Um, Valin asks, 
how much have you lost like at your worst days? How much have you won on your best days, and how do you deal with it? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think for the most part, it was very incremental. If I think about like worst days, best days, we're probably talking a couple of thousand dollars. Um, probably either way. I don't think that there's times when I've made. I mean, usually they all balance out, right? So usually, most days, <coughs> excuse me, I am making, you know, a few hundred, right? So the bad days, you know, I might be losing, you know, uh, a couple of thousand. And the good days, I am making, you know, a, a 2,500 or something like that, right? Most days, I'm not, you know, just making 300 bucks, right? Most days I'm either making 2,500 or losing 2,000 or making 4,000 or losing, you know, whatever it is. And it averages out to 300 bucks. Um, but that's about the sizes that I was, I'm was i dealing with. Um, as far as how do I deal with it? I mean, it's what I sign up for, you know. It doesn't feel uh, so bad to lose a coin flip when you know that you're losing, you know, you're... You're the one flipping the coin. You, you expect to lose the coin flip half the time, right? Or in the case of sports bets, like 48% of the time, right? So if, like, I don't know, it doesn't hurt that much when that's exactly what you're expecting. And also when it happens 15 times a day, right? Um, and to be honest, I think that if it is the kind of thing that like really gets to you and hurts you, um, it's not for you. You shouldn't be doing it because that, that, uh, that pain, that thing that like, I know that emotion is the type of emotion that gets people, I don't know, either addicted to sports betting on one side or just have no interest in it at all on the other side, which is fine, but also you wouldn't want to be a professional sports better. Um, I mean, to talk about that too, before this, I guess also now, but I was and am a, a very competitive Magic the Gathering player. I was on the Pro Tour and you know have just done a lot of that. And it's a card game. And while there is skill involved, it's, I mean, just like poker, there's a lot of variance involved and you have to be loose to, used to losing. And at the end of the game, you don't look and say, did I win? You look and say, did I make the best decisions I could? And if you did, then even if you lost, you should be happy with yourself. And if you won, but you made a bunch of mistakes, you should be sad with yourself. Um, And that's the same thing with sports betting. And that's really where uh, I think I either learned that skill or honed it. So, yeah. Uh, also, I, I had a degree in economics, which I think is where I learned a bunch of stuff like, you know, what expected value is in the first place and that that type of stuff. So that that degree has certainly also helped. And so uh, why did you quit? Um, you kind of hinted at it throughout the presentation, but what, why did you and, and what are you still doing right now? If any. Yeah, so I, I quit because I got I mean. There was never one moment where I'm like, all right, enough of this. I'm quitting. Where yesterday I'm placing, you know, 30 bets a day and tomorrow I'm placing zero. It's a lot more like over time I just placed fewer and fewer because I got, you know, knocked off of one book and then you know, a little bit later another book and then another book and another book. And so, or and in one book I didn't get knocked out. Or knocked off of it, but instead of being able to bet two hundred dollars, I'm only I'm only able to bet fifty dollars now, which you can make money on, but like it's not very much anymore. And so over time that happened, and then this website went away, and so I had to find a different one, which I did, but that was like forty bucks a month and had a worse UI, and so I wasn't really happy to do that. And uh, eventually I was like, all right, well I'm not paying for that website anymore. And once I'm not paying for that website anymore, I have to be looking through all the stuff manually, which just takes a bunch of time. So I basically just stopped at that point. Um, nowadays, what I do is basically just the promos of the daily kind of stuff. I, I follow these people on Twitter and I place those promos and it takes probably five minutes a day um, and makes me a hundred or 200 bucks a year, you know, something like that. It's very small money. But it's probably not five minutes a day for 200 bucks a year. So that wouldn't 
to be honest, be a very good deal. Uh, but um, that's most of what I do nowadays. <clears throat> And um, uh, Jay Sword asks, what are your thoughts on non-sports betting markets? Do you see similar asymmetries there? So I don't know too much about the non-sports betting markets, just like prediction markets in general. I know that there are ones as far as, you know, who's going to be elected president next, you know? Will the war in Ukraine still be going on by a certain date? There's all kinds of predictions and all kinds of bets you can make. Um, what I do know is that for the most part, I think exclusively, but I don't want to be wrong. Um, they're all offshore other country, um, websites or, you know, companies that do it, which means that it's just not regulated. And I have heard some horror stories about, you know, you win your bet and then they void your bet and you're like, well, why did you void your bet? And they have no good reason, but you can't do anything about it because there's no regulation. And so you kind of are just out that money. Um, as far as the actual, like, behind the scenes stuff, it's basically the same thing, right? I don't think there's any, I don't know, difference between will a team win a game versus will a person win a presidency? They're both things that a bunch of people have different predictions on, do a bunch of research on, and make bets against each other on, and come to a, you know, an unexpected uh, odds based off of where people, uh, you know, put their money um, behind their their words. And so I like those as far as doing predictions and knowing, like, or estimating, like, who's going to be the next president. Looking at those things is probably the best prediction you can have rather than like poll numbers or that kind of thing. I think betting markets are really good for that. Um, but, you know, we don't have a lot of good betting markets that are really uh, have lots of traffic and all that kind of stuff. So there's, you know, yeah, lots of thumbs up with a you know whole bunch of grains of salt. Uh, Valen asks, how time-consuming was the sports betting, and has it affected your social life? Was there a need to always check your your phone to look for new opportunities? Um, so it wasn't that time-consuming. It's the kind of thing where, like, in the morning, I get up, and I sit down on my computer, and I spend, you know, some amount of hours just you know, going through all the different sports books in a row, looking at all the different promos they have in a row, um, figuring out which ones are good or bad, and placing all those promos because they usually have it each day, right? After that, then I do the arbitrage stuff, which isn't, you know, like for the day. It's usually, you know, I have it up on my second monitor and I'm going back to that every, I don't know, 10 minutes, half hour, hour, something, whenever I am not right in the middle of something and I have a chance and going and refreshing and taking a look. Um, so as far as like time consuming, it wasn't that bad, you know, it's, I mean, especially compared to normal jobs and stuff, it was, uh, it was good. Um, I, I would, I would love another job that had the work-life balance kind of time consumingness as this. Um, as far as the social life, uh, I mean, it was fine, you know, like, it's the kind of thing you talk about and everybody's like, oh, that's so interesting because it's a cool sounding job. It's a little bit, I don't know, I don't want to call it a curse, but like, you talk to, you say you're a professional sports writer and you're like, oh, really? Dude, the Bucks, I swear to God, they're going to win this year. Have you seen how good so-and-so is doing? I swear, here's this bet that I made. I know this is a really good one. You know, people just want to talk to you about their sports bets and that kind of stuff. And you don't care what the sports bets are because you know that they're bad because they didn't do their research and they didn't base it off of what books are saying. They base it off of how they felt. So people love to talk about this stuff. And that's the least, that's the thing that I'm like least interested as far as that goes. So, I mean, there is that part, but, you know, I'm fine with socializing like that. and. Oh, that's so interesting. That's cool. Yeah. I saw the game the other day. Yeah. There wasn't always a need to check my phone to look for a new opportunity. It was the kind of thing where I want to take a look when I get a chance. But if I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not losing money. 
I'm just not making money. My money's sitting there. It's doing fine. It's, you know, it's not at risk. Uh, and if I don't look at my phone, nothing's going to happen to it, uh, which is fine. You know, I like sometimes it sucks to know that there's an opportunity you missed, but there's all kinds of opportunities, right? There's 30 something plus, you know, per day. So if you miss one, if you miss five, there's going to be another. So it's not so bad. Would I work in the sports betting industry if given the option to? Uh, I would. Um, I think so. Uh, I mean, it depends on the position and what it exactly entails. Um, but I think I would. Uh, I have no, I don't know. Like, I don't know, qualms with, I don't know, working in, in the industry. Um, yeah, I don't see it that different from any other, I don't know. I wouldn't want to work, I guess, as far as like morally questionable industries, because sports betting is certainly there. I think it's the same kind of thing as casinos, right? Or it's like, you know, it, it is it a social harm on the net? Who It's close, right? Certainly there's a lot of, you know, pluses as far as people being entertained and getting happiness from it. But those negatives, while they are certainly much rarer, are also much larger, uh, where you know, uh, somebody is really bad, you know, addicted and losing everything and it's terrible. Um, and do all of those small pluses outweigh the few, you know, large, you know, negatives? I don't know. Um, that's tough to say. As far as working there goes, um, I think it would be interesting enough. I mean, there is a, a lot to think about and it's not a dull job uh but i also don't think that i'd be doing the same thing working for the industry uh or working for a like a sports book that i would be doing now um one thing that i kind of wish that i did do back then was you know try to create you know what these guys have of doing the work you know going and looking at all of these boosts and doing the math of them all if i created like a a discord or a a subscription service where I was doing all the work and posting it. And then people are just paying to not have to do that work. I think I could have been making more sustainable money, um, which would have been good. Uh, but it's too late for that. So, yeah. All right. We're going to wrap this up here. Do you have anything else you want to say? Or are you uh, excited? Uh, I don't think so. If anybody has any other questions for me, uh, feel free to reach out to me on Discord. I'm Tankinator. Um, I don't think that there's anything pressing that I've forgotten to talk about. I mean, I could keep talking. You've seen me talking. I'm just a talker. Uh, but I will end it here. And uh, thanks for thanks for listening.